it was good. No, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, we had a good, you know, it was a good battle. Uh, you know, everyone competed. I uh, got up and down a little bit, got a lot of shots up. So, you know, just a, it was a good, solid workout. You consider yourself a point guard, right? I know there's a lot of discussion about what position you'll play at the next level. Just kind of how do you see yourself as a player position? I think, you know, I wouldn't say I consider myself a point guard, but I'd say, you know, I'm very versatile. I can play point guard, I can play two, three, and even go into the four. So, I think, you know, that's one of my strengths is, you know, the, the versatility I have that I can play on both ends. I can play many different positions. And, um, but yeah, I've played point guard a lot my, my whole life, but, you know, I'm willing to, you know, go play off the ball as well, you know, because especially in the NBA, a lot of these guys, you know, already have a, a point guard that's very good at creating. So being able to play off the ball, you have to do and I feel like I have that skill too. What did you want the Wizards to take away from the UK? What was that, sorry? What do you want them to know about you at the end of the workout? Um... I mean, I've, I've worked a lot on my shot, so just knowing that you know I can be, a, you know, stick, stick the shot, you know, be able to play on the floor with, um, you know, with shooters and things like that. And uh, I feel like I showed that today. You know, I was able to knock down some shots off the dribble, you know, catch and shoot. But um, you know, just show them a bit of my every every bit of my game. You know, I think I don't really have a weakness. I have a lot of strengths that I, that I can use, and just show them that I can do a little bit of everything. And what's the process been like for you? Such an overwhelming schedule. Where have you been? Where are you going next? It's been tough, but you know, stakes are high, so it's been good. You know, I've really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a process. You know, I've had seven workouts now. I've still got one more at Sacramento, but you know, I get like four or five days off now to rest the body, go work, work on some things. But you know, this last two weeks definitely been tough, but it's, it's been enjoyable for sure. What do you feel like you're going to work on in the four days? Four days, that's not. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a lot of time, but you know, just get the body refreshed, right? Um, you know, my family's coming up from Australia, so spend some time with them, which would be good. But you know, just refresh the body. You know, uh, get in the gym. You know, just you know, touch up a few things on the shot, the like ball handling, things like that. And uh, you get ready for Sacramento on Thursday, I think it is. So. Hey, thanks and thanks a lot of your teammates from the G League and that. Just how did that experience help you and get you ready for the next level? Yeah, that was huge. You know, my teammates were really good. You know, we had a great group of guys that, you know, love being together. And I think, you know, having that bond, uh, especially in the Ignite team, we have a lot of young guys coming into the team. But, um, you know, finding that gel was really, really good with those guys because everyone wanted to, you know, see each other succeed. So, um, you know, for me, I really enjoyed my Ignite experience. And, um, you know, some of the guys I met along the way are going to be my friends for life. So. And then what were, what were some of the uh, things the vets were able to try to help you out and teach you along the way? Yeah, they were huge for me. Uh, you know, Kev Murphy, Poo Jetta, me, Johnson, CJ Mother, those guys, they've been around a long time. They, they know the game well. So just, they, they know my weaknesses. So they push me in training on my weaknesses to, to help strengthen them. And for me, it's just about, um, you know, putting in the work, you know, learning of them, especially Poo, who plays, plays my position. He's a very good talker. Um, you know, being more secure with the ball, you know, looking around, finding different options. So those guys are just really helpful for me. And, you know, those are great guys to be around for sure. On I've heard you your games. On the court. Sorry about that. See, this is one of the tests yeah. here for the workout. Yeah. What was the biggest adjustment for you to playing in the pool? It's the pace of the game for sure. Just the, you know, coming from Australia, playing more of a structured system. You know, you, you run a play to get a certain shot, whereas here you're flying up and down um, a lot. You know, getting quick shots, a lot of ball screens, uh, you know, defending a lot of ball screens, you know, making reads um, of what the defense is doing. And for me, it's just the pace flying up and down, making reads on the fly and learning how to play that way. But I think as the game starts to slow down for me, I started to play my own game. It definitely, uh, you know, works a lot better in my favor. I've heard you compare your game to Tyrese Halliburton. Mm -hmm. um, does that apply to the defensive end, or is there a player you can kind of look up to on that end of the floor? I feel like I'm more on the offensive end, I'd say Tyrese Halliburton, just the way he comes up ball screens, his size, uses his floater, you know, the way he passes and things like that. But you know, two-way players like Lonzo Ball, um, those are probably the guys that I watch watch the most and learn off. Because you know they defend, they, they play with the ball. Um, on the defensive end, I look like the Mikel Bridges as well, just the way he, uh, he disrupts the game, disrupts the ball. Um, but yeah, I want to develop, you know, into like a like a Luka Doncic, like Shea Gilles Alexander type player that you know just really good at creating for themselves and creating the teammates. So. What, uh, how old were you when you stopped playing Australian rules football? I was 15. So yeah, that was that was a tough decision, basketball or Australian football. But at the end, I was, I was probably a bit better at basketball, so I chose that. But every time I go home, you know, I have a kick of the footy, so um, that's good to you know just run around with the mates and you know, play different sports. So. And can you explain Australian rules? It's a lot different. Uh, it's a lot different to American football. Um, so basically, you, you handball the ball, you kick the ball, you tackle. It's a lot of running. Um, so you got to be in shape. But it's very different. It's hard to explain. But um, there yeah. are a lot of tall guys like you. It's, it's more small guys running around, tackling each other. No, no protective gear. So it's good to watch. A lot of Americans that, that have seen it, so they love love to watch it. So um, 
yeah, hopefully one day we can get it over here and you know, get, get a footy in the, in the gym or something, have a kick. So. How does that impact what you do on the basketball? Does it translate from the... I think just the physicality of it. Um, you know, it's a very physical sport, a lot of bumping, you know, a lot of holding your ground, so you're not getting pushed off your line and things like that. So uh, I think, you know, the physicality of it definitely, you know, translates to basketball. What's it like being in a workout with uh, Ty Ty Washington, who's a point guard in this class? He's a great player. Uh, you know, going against him, you know, having to defend him, you know, he's very good off the dribble, very good shot creator. So, you know, it's really good, you know, going up against guys like that because, you know, they, they make you better for sure. What, think was the, it, what was it like for you to interact from, with Rod Strickland? Yeah, Rod's my guy. You know, he was very helpful for me, especially at the start of the season when I was struggling a lot. You know, he was one of the guys that kind of took me under his wing and you know, he did ball handling and finishing and things like that with me. So you know, he's very helpful and he's got a great mind for the game. So, you know, um, you know thanks to Rod for that because I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, to be honest. So. What, do, what do teams want to know about you in this pre-draft process? What kind of questions are you getting most often? Uh, it's a lot about, you know, my background, you know, what, what my game's like, you know, how I see my game, how I, um, you know, like who I compare my game to, but that's just a lot of general basketball questions. And some people ask me like what the city's like and stuff like that. But I mean, it's a, it's a big variety of questions. Mm. I think the Wizards list you at 6'6". Six, six. What would you say your height is? 6'8". Six, 6'8". Eight. Six, eight. She's on? She's on. <laughs> She's on 6'8". Yeah. And is it, is are you still dream? growing? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, we'll have to see in six months. I, I'm, I'm not too sure yet. But over the last year, have you grown? I have over the last year for sure. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not too sure yet. I'm, I've gotten a lot taller last year, but I haven't stopped yet. I don't think I still got a little bit more in me. So. Considering your dad, where your dad's from, they say the United States, how much interest and curiosity did you have about the United States when you were growing up down under? Yeah, I mean, you know, my dad's family still lives over here, so, you know, me and my family like to get over here and, you know, spend some, like, Christmases and things with our family. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've always had interest in getting over here, especially because the NBA is here, and that was my dream as a kid. But, you know, I love it here. I think it's great. I love Australia as well. But um, anytime, you know, dad can get over here, see his family and things like that, you know, I love to come with him and, you know, just catch up, you know, with them. How closely do you follow the examples of people such as Dante X and Ben Simmons? Yeah. Um, you see where I'm going with Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some great Australian players in the league right now. And uh, obviously, you know, a lot of them came through the same path in Australia um, that I came through. And, you know, to see them doing their thing out there, the way the way that they are, they're playing the, the US style play. And um, you know, especially like Josh Giddy last year, who dominated uh, his rookie season. You know, it just it gives me confidence because knowing that um, you know, I was playing with him you know, like two years ago. So, I mean, it's, a, it's great knowing the Australian bo basketball works in uh, the American the American system. but. Um, yeah, obviously there's some great Australian players in the league right now. You're, you're known as a tough defender. Um, where does that come from? Yeah, I think uh, as a kid, you know, I've always you know, had the defensive skills, quick hands, quick feet, and then toughness is part of the game. That's just something I think the Australian basketball raises. Um, you know, coming from the academy, they taught that you know, you've got to be tough to, to be on the floor. So um, for me, it's just you know, being in my DNA, and I love playing tough, I love playing physical. I think it's a fun part of the game. And, um, yeah, you know, defense wins games. So, you know, just you know, heart, heart and hustle. I think it takes a lot, a lot of the defensive fan. And if you bring it every every possession, every game, then you know, most likely, you know, you're going to be a good defender. If you get drafted here, you'd be in the backcourt with Bradley Beal. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about his game and the potential fit you would have alongside him? Yeah, obviously, Beal's a great player. He's been a great player for a long time. You know, I think we fit well together. I think you know we can both play off each other a little bit. I can play off the ball with him. He can play off, off the ball with me. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, it takes a little while to adjust to playing with new people, but I think, you know, there's definitely a fit there for sure. Had you met with the Wizards before at the Combine or any other event, and if so, what kind of feedback did Yeah, I met with them at the do? Combine. I um, met with them again after this, so, but uh, yeah, I've met with them a few times. So they give you kind of interview there? Yeah, interview. Uh, yeah, at the Combine, yeah. I guess what was the feedback process like or how did you guys, you know, interact? Yeah, I think, you know, it's just getting to know each other a little bit more our background. Um, obviously, they, they've seen a lot of our basketball already. Um, just, you know, testing our mind to see how we pick apart the game a little bit. And, um, yeah, I think it's just good to get to know new people, get to know the staff, because if you're here, you know, it's an important thing. So. Jackson, you look at some of your, I guess, alumni at G League and, like, what kind of confidence did they give you, again, stepping into this next level? Yeah, it was huge. Uh, the G League obviously prepared me in a big way. You know, obviously in the G League, there's some great players, that, you know, NBA caliber players. So going up against them every day and knowing that I can hold my own and play my own game, um, it gives me confidence. And obviously the NBA is a, a next step, but I'm ready to take it, I think. So yeah, G League definitely prepared me.
And maybe like, have you got to reach out to like a Jalen Green, a Kaminga, and they don't uh, got? No, nah, I haven't. Kaminga came into the G League, uh, like our practices a few times, but I haven't, I haven't talked to them much. But um, you know, some of my teammates, you know, who, who have been in the league and stuff, I've been in contact with them. So. What is uh, Marjan Bochamp like? That's my guy, Marjan. You know, uh, just to see his work ethic and where he's gotten to from where he was, it, it's huge, and it's you know, it's very humbling to see and. Um, you know, I love what he's done. He's a great guy, you know, off the floor. He plays hard. Um, and, yeah, he's a, he's a very family-orientated guy. So to see him doing his thing and know that he's succeeding, it's huge. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to, that I was able to play with him. And, you know, it's just great to see him succeeding. So. He was here three days ago, two days ago. He was here recently. Yeah. And we asked him about you, and I think his answer was, Dyson's my guy. Yeah, I mean, Marjan's my guy. You know, we are. We went, we went on a trip together to New York and that's when we got to know each other a little bit more and uh, that was at the very start of Ignite season and we bonded well and, uh, and obviously, you know, like I said, he's, uh, he's had a you know, different path to a lot of people here and he's had to work for it. So uh, just seeing him succeed and knowing that um, you know, the NBA is right there, that, that's, his, that's his goal and um, it's just great to see, see things like that and I'm uh, very, very you know, great, grateful to you know, see him succeed. Were the seven teams you've worked out for so far? So I went Portland, San Antonio, New Orleans, uh, New York, Detroit, Indiana, then here. Uh, 